Welcome to the Dynon Channel, your video source for information, education, and training on Dynon Avionics' industry-leading line of integrated avionics for experimental amateur-built and light sport aircraft. Today's topic, Skyview System, customizing engine page layouts. In today's video, I'd like to demonstrate one of the features which I believe to be the most underutilized feature in the entire Skyview system, and that is your ability to customize the layout of all the various information on your engine page. Currently, I uh, have my Skyview display configured to show 100% uh, engine inf instruments. Hopefully you're familiar with the various screen layouts. I can also shrink my engine page down to just 50% of my display or even 20% wide. Let me show you real quickly. I'm going to use the screen menu. I'm going to turn on my primary flight instruments. There's an example of the 20% engine page. If I use my layout button, uh, here's an example of the 50% wide engine page. And notice we see we have a lot more space, we see a lot more information. Uh, and then of course returning to the 100% engine page, I have, have even more information to, uh, to more space to put information on the screen. What I need you to understand is that every single piece of information you see on here is customizable. You can relocate its position on the display, you can change the size, you can change the type of graphical display that's used, you can e even change in some cases which direction does the needle rotate. Uh, and I'm going to demonstrate how, how you change those layouts now. So to access the, the engine page layout editor, we have to go into Skyview's system setup. You should be familiar with this from configuring your own Skyview, but I'm going to press and hold buttons 7 and 8. And here we are in the System Setup menu. Looking down the left side, my focus is on the fifth item, EMS Setup. EMS stands for Engine Monitoring System. So I'm going to choose that option now, click my joystick to the right. I have a number of items associated with the engine uh, portion of Skyview. Notice the third item labeled Screen Layout Editor. I highlight that, click my knob to the right, and here you can see that I have three options corresponding to the three relative engine page sizes. The 100% page we started with, a 50% page, and a 20% page. Each one of those can be separately configured by you. Uh, I'm going to start by showing us the layout editor for the 100% engine page. So I click my knob to the right. Now, you have to remember that you're in the editor uh, because it looks very similar to the engine page when you're flying, but the menu is different. Uh, the first two items we're going to interact with are on buttons 3 and 4, sensor and info. Those refer to two different types of items that can be displayed on your en engine page. Any item that you see displayed here that has color associated with it, a graphical display, we call those widgets and they're associated with sensors, meaning each one of those graphical widgets is showing information from a discrete individual sensor in your system. Uh, a perfect example is here on the lower left, you can see that I have an oil pressure sensor, or oil pressure indicator, and an oil temperature indicator. If I wanted to change either one of those, I would have to choose the sensor menu. So let's do that now. Pressing button 3, sensor, here I have a list of all of the various sensors available in my system. Notice the asterisk at, asterisk at the top says, if there's an asterisk, it means that that sensor is currently displayed somewhere on the page I'm looking for. So I, I'm going to start with oil pressure. I need to find that in the list. Oil, and it's the third item down. I'm going to rotate my knob. Here I've highlighted oil pressure, corresponds with this widget here. Now, to interact with that one, I need to press button 8, labeled Accept. Watch what happens when I do. Notice this thin white box that appears around that area of the screen in capturing that oil pressure sensor indicator. Now, I can do a number of uh, different processes to interact with that. First of all, if I wanted to reposition it, I use the joystick on the knob to do that. If I click it, you can see it starts to move on the page. And I can move it in any of the four cardinal directions. If I wanted to move it 
more quickly. I can press the joystick and hold it in the direction I want. But that's how I can uh, reposition a sensor on my screen. I better put it back roughly where I had it, and I want to now address a couple of the other menu items. Notice button 5 labeled Style. If I press that, it's a, a toggle that lets me switch through various types of presentations for that sensor. Some of those presentations make sense for this particular type. I could choose to have my oil pressure indicated as a bar, as I've shown here. Uh, I can have a, it in a, a an arc, like we saw originally, but the, in this case the needle is sweeping clockwise. If I go far enough, here's an, a graphical arc in which the needle will sweep counterclockwise, and so on. I'm going to maneuver back to the one I had originally selected, and that's right here. Notice now the next menu item says size. If I wanted a much bigger arc, I have three sizes for each graphical widget to choose from. And let me press that button six, size. Ah, it got much bigger. Now it's gone to the smallest possible size for that widget type. Again, to the medium and large. Now, let's say I don't need to see him so large. I'm going to switch this one to a small graphical widget. I'm using the joystick to position him. Uh, I'm going to move him way over here on the left. Okay, so how about that? Let's leave him there. Now let's say I want to change my oil temperature sensor to be the s same size as, as the pressure sensor and also reposition him. And tell you what, I'm even going to have the needle sweep counterclockwise in that case, so I need to press the sensor button. Now I'm looking at oil temperature. I find oil temperature in the list, and there it is, the next one down. Rotating my knob to highlight that. Again, I press button 8 to accept, meaning I want to interact with that sensor widget. There's my box that captures that sensor. And again, I'm going to uh, change the size. There's the large, larger. Ah, in that case, I've chosen a sensor that is much larger. So let me s select through the style. I said I wanted to have this needle sweep counterclockwise, and that's what I've selected here. I like that. Now I'm going to go back and change its size. There's a large size. Uh, there's my familiar small size. So that is the counter part to the pressure sensor I uh, modified a moment ago. Now I'm going to go back to my joystick action and reposition that so that those two indicators are fairly close together. Now the fact that I have the two needles sweeping together like windshield wipers, that uh, might be my preference and not yours. You don't have to do that. I'm just using that now for demonstration purposes. Now one thing you should be able to see is because I made those sensors smaller and I repositioned them here, I've created some open space on my screen. I could put anything in that space. Uh, my choice, over here I would point out here's a, an on-off indicator for my pedal heat. Maybe I want to move that to that space. Let's capture that one by pressing the sensor item. And I, there's my pedal heat contact right there. It's a contact sensor type, P-heat, pedo heat. Again, pressing button 8 to accept. There's my box capturing that item. I'll use the joystick to quickly position that. So that's a quick demonstration of highlighting a sensor, or rather selecting a sensor from a list, highlighting it, and then performing some actions, changing its style, size, and position on the screen. And the same action can apply to every graphical widget we see on the screen here. Now next, notice that there's a number of items on my screen that are, are comprised simply of a text label and a numeric value. In the lower right-hand corner here, uh, you can see some items you should recognize, Hobbs and Tack. They don't have any graphical display associated with them. Those are what we call info items. So again, info items are text-based items or alphameric uh, text and numbers that are associated typically with calculated values. They may not come from an individual discrete sensor, but they may be calculated by the internal computer. So let's see how we interact with those. Well, instead of pressing the sensor menu, I'm going to choose the info menu. Notice again we have a list of all the various info items at my disposal. Again, there's the, the key, the legend that says an asterisk indicates those items in the list that are displayed somewhere on my current engine page. And as I scroll through that list, 
you can actually see that every single item that's available for me to display is positioned, is selected somewhere on my screen. Let me go ahead and move the Tack and Hobbs items over next to the pedo heat. So I need to scroll through this list. Ah, there is Hobbs. So I'm going to press button 8 to accept. There's the familiar white box, and I'm going to use the joystick action to slide that Hobbs indicator right over next to the pedo heat in the space I created there. I'll move him down just a little bit. Now I'm going to bring the Tack indicator back over too, so I'll once again press Info, button 4. Tack is the next one in my list. I'll highlight that now. Press button 8 to accept. There's my capture box, and I will use my knob, joystick fashion, to slide that Tack indicator right over here. There he goes. Right above my hobs. Now, I'm going to show one more uh, option, and that is how to remove an item from your screen. How about this one that says Air Total? Let me choose Info, and let's see if we can find that in my list. Total Air Time. There it is, Total Air Time, Air Total. I'm going to select that. There's my capture box, meaning that's the, the info item that's currently selected. If I wanted to remove it completely from my screen, I would simply press button 7, which is labeled Remove. When I press that, the item is gone. So you can see this, this engine page layout is completely customizable by you. You have to spend some time in the system to define, uh, decide what works best for you in your aircraft, depending on how many cylinders you have, the engine type you're monitoring. Maybe you don't have an adjustable propeller, so you don't need to see manifold pressure, for example. You might remove that widget completely. Once you're complete you finished uh, changing your layout, the last button you have to press is button 8, labeled Save. If I were to press that button now, this new engine layout that I've created would be preserved and it would show every time I look at the 100% engine page in the Skyview system. Now in my case, I don't want to preserve these changes because uh, this actually isn't the way I like my layout, but in your case, if you made the changes, don't forget to press button 8 to save. In my case, I'm going to press Cancel so I don't preserve those changes. And notice that we give you one more helpful hint. When I press the Cancel button, I get a, menu, uh, a message here that says, Changes to the layout will be lost if you cancel. Are you sure you really want to cancel? That's so that we don't uh, allow you to inadvertently dump all those changes you maybe just spent uh, quite a bit of time making. In my case, yes, I'm sure I want to cancel OK. I'll press button 8, labeled Yes. So that was the 100% page. You can see here on my menu on the left, I have access to the 50% page and the 20% page. Again, each of those three engine page sizes can be separately customized by you. Now I'm going to give you a real world example. I'm going to highlight the 20% engine page and click my joystick to the right. There's a picture of my 20% page. Now, this is a fairly uh, slimmed down page. A lot of information that you may have seen in your Skyview system by default has been removed from this page. But let's assume that uh, I only have two fuel tanks in my airplane instead of four. There's no reason for me to have four tanks displayed here across the middle. Let's remove those from this display. So let me are those info items? No, those are graphical items, so they're a sensor type. Let me press button 3, sensor. Now I need to ha find those two fuel tanks. Well, I'm talking about, first of all, the right aux fuel level and left. I'll select the left one first, L aux level, button 8 to accept. And now it's captured with that bl white box around it, and I'll remove that from my display. I want to grab the right aux tank, so sensor, highlight right aux level, button 8 to accept. My capture box surrounds it, and I will remo remove that. Now, what I hope you're seeing is I rely on the 20% wide engine page in Cruise. Once I'm established in Cruise, I don't need to see a whole lot of information because I'm relying on Skyview's system of multiple types of alerts to tell me if anything is amiss with my engine instruments. There's audible alerts. There's button 8 gives me my warning messages if, if my oil pressure were to get too low, for example. Things like that. So my personal preferences in Cruise, I only need to see a handful of info items. 
and if I want to get more information about my engine, I would change my screen layout to the 50% page or the 100% page. So my personal preference is I actually don't even uh, care to see my, uh, let's say I don't need to see my cylinder head and EGT temperatures because I already adjusted those once I arrived at cruise. Let me remove that graphical item from the screen. Once again, I press button 3 for sensor. Now, where will I find those? Well, you s I happen to know that all the way at the bottom, notice we have CHT temps and the EGT temps, but there's no asterisk. That tells me those items are not currently on this page. N reading down below on the same line, I say EGT, CHT temps. That's a combined widget that shows both CHT and EGT temperatures in one graphical item. And the asterisk tells me that's the one that's currently selected. So I'm going to leave that highlighted, press button 8 to accept. There's my white capture box, and I said I wanted to get rid of those. So I press button 7 to remove. Ah, now I've pared this down to a pretty manageable list. One last item I'm going to get rid of is notice right here in the middle I have a, a trim indicator. Once I'm established in cruise, I don't really look at that trim indicator. I, cruise the, I trim the airplane by feel, so I don't think I need to see that in cruise. I'm going to remove that sensor also. So button 3, sensor. Now I need to find the trim icon in this list. And there it is right there, highlighted trim position. I'm button 8 to accept. There's my capture box, and I'm going to remove that. Now I could do a, a, a whole bunch more with this. I could reposition things, sm spread them out a little bit so they're easier to see individually. My point is on this 20% page, my personal preference is to have only a handful of items displayed, permanently displayed in crews. So this is pretty close to what I might consider an ideal layout for the 20% page. If I wanted to preserve this, of course I would press my save button, and that's what you would do. In my case, I'm going to cancel because I don't want to overwrite my uh, current settings. So I'll press button 1 to cancel. Changes will be lost. OK. Yes, I know they're going to be lost. Carry on. So those are two quick demonstrations of changing the engine page layout. Here we are back to the main engine page, uh, the live engine page. Again, one more quick demonstration. If I was in cruise, you would see me traveling with this kind of layout, my flight instruments and a 20% engine page on the right. Again, my actual layout is a little bit too busy, but I share this airplane with other pilots, so I'm not going to change that. If it was my airplane, all my own, I would remove a whole bunch of information on this 20% page so that in cruise I can just focus on the handful of key items. If I needed to see more information about my engine, I could reach up and either press my layout button to show me the 50% page, which has room for lots more stuff, or I could remove my flight instruments, and there's the maximum display of engine instruments. So there you have a pretty comprehensive summary of how to change your engine page layout in your airplane. Again, I would point out this is probably the least utilized feature in the Skyview system. I've talked to hundreds, probably thousands of pilots that use Skyview, and very few of them have invested the time to customize these layouts to their needs. I think if you'll spend some time watching my video and then trying this yourself, I think you'll end up uh, with very useful engine pages that work perfectly for you. Again, thanks for joining me, and uh, tune back for more videos. For more information on planning or capabilities of the Skyview system, please see our website at dynonavionics.com, where you can find links to our system installation guides, pilot user guides, and other valuable information like our user form. Thank you for watching the Dynon channel.